I don't know about you all, but everyone is obsessing over the wrong thing. We're all hyped up on digital AGI, chatbots, code generators, whatever. But let me be real with you for a second. The true singularity, it's not going to happen on a screen. It starts the exact moment that super intelligence gets a body and legit starts competing with us in the physical world. Think about it. For 200,000 years, the entire physical economy ran on human muscle and sweat. That was our domain. But that era is straight up ending. We aren't just talking about automation anymore. We're talking about AGI that can walk, build and adapt faster than any human ever could. It's borderline scary. And honestly, the physical economy is about to get rewritten. Let's break it down. In the next 15 minutes, we're going to break down the massive forces driving what I'm calling the robot singularity. First, we'll look at how AGI is moving from software into machines and why NVIDIA's CEO Jensen Huang says we are realizing science fiction. Second, we'll crunch the numbers on why robot labor is about to make human labor mathematically obsolete. Third, we're going to look at the consumer race because this tech isn't just for factories anymore, it's coming for your living room. And finally, we'll talk about the power shift, how this tech reshapes global dominance and what it means for your job. This isn't just a tech review, this is an economic survival guide. Let's go. Chapter one, the age of bodied intelligence. We've all been glued to our screens watching LLMs write poetry, thinking that's the peak. But here's the reality check. AGI without a body is basically a ghost. Digital brains are cool. But the actual economy? It doesn't run on text, it runs on atoms, it runs on moving stuff, welding stuff, shipping stuff. And until literally right now, robots were, well, kind of dumb. They were bottlenecked by mobility, perception and control. But listen to Brett Adcock, the founder of Figure AI. He didn't mince words when he said, we're not building robots, we're building a new species. We're, we're building a new species here and it's gonna be like, we're, you, like, we'll start with you know, thousands and millions and billions and like. We're not building the robots, we're building a new species, really. I think you're building a new species with onboard intelligence. That is the vibe right now. We aren't building tools, we are building entities. You've got Tesla's Optimus showing off fine motor control that rivals a human hand. You've got Jensen Huang from NVIDIA explicitly stating, we are as close to realizing science fiction as it gets. Okay, let's talk about the next wave of robotics. The next wave of AI, robotics, physical AI. When the guy selling the shovels for the AI gold rush tells you the next wave is robotics, you listen. These machines aren't just following scripts anymore. They are using vision language models, VLMS, to look at a messy room, understand it, and clean it up without a single line of pre-written code. But here is the part that should actually keep you up at night. The true glitch in the matrix moment isn't that robots can walk. It's this, a robot with AGI doesn't need to learn. It downloads. If one robot in a factory in Berlin figures out how to fix a specific engine part, every single robot in that company's fleet from Tokyo to Texas knows how to do it instantly. Humans take 10,000 hours to master a skill. A robot fleet takes 10 seconds. That is the difference between a worker and a universal worker. Chapter two, the physical economy collapses. All right, buckle up because we need to talk money. And I don't mean small change, I mean the kind of economics that breaks the world. Right now, hiring a human being costs anywhere from $4 to $40 an hour globally. That's the floor. But look at where the cost of humanoid robots is going. According to a massive report from Goldman Sachs, the bill of materials, the cost to build the bot, has already dropped by 40% in just one year. We are seeing cost curves that look exactly like Moore's law. Elon Musk has gone on record saying that at scale, an Optimus robot will cost less than a car, maybe $20,000 to $30,000. I think at scale, the, the, you know, this would cost something like, I don't know, $20,000, $30,000. Probably less, less than a car is my prediction long term. Now do the math with me, a $20,000 robot that lasts for five years and works 16 hours a day. You are looking at an operating cost of less than $1 per hour. Let that sink in. Less than a dollar. Humans need sleep. We get tired, we get injured, we need healthcare. A robot runs 24 seven. It has zero fatigue, it never complains. This isn't competition, it's an economic massacre. Even ARK Invest is predicting that by 2030, this technology could expand the market value of disruptive innovation to over $200 trillion. 
So today we think that disruptive technologies are valued in the marketplace at roughly $13 trillion. Uh, and we think um, the value of rural will, will uh, exceed 200 trillion by 2030. And so more than half of global equity market uh, capitalization will be comprised of disruptive technologies and the innovation platforms that we focus on. Why? Because when labor becomes cheap, you can do more of it. And that brings us to the paradox that Elon Musk keeps talking about, an age of abundance. And, and I do think overall that the potential is there for artificial intelligence, AI, to have most likely a positive effect to create a future of abundance where there is no scarcity of goods and services. We've spent all of human history terrified of scarcity. But Geordie Rose, the CEO of Sanctuary AI, put it bluntly, the goal is to replace the entire labour market. He's not hiding it. The plan is to take every job that is dangerous, dull or dirty and give it to a machine. But here is the catch. Our economy is built on selling our labour. If labour cost goes to zero, the price of goods might crash. Sure, but how do we earn money to buy them? That is the $100 trillion question. The Amazon case study. If you think these numbers are theoretical, just look at Amazon. They are the ultimate testing ground. For the last decade, Amazon has used blind robots, those little Kiva Roombas that move shelves around. They have deployed over 750,000 of them, but that was just phase one. Now, they are testing Agility Robotics Digit in their R and D labs south of Seattle. We are very excited about the Amazon relationship and what's transpired recently. We were part of their key media day event and up there we demoed and showed Digit uh, doing real work in a use case that we were testing at uh, up in Seattle uh, at Amazon's facilities. Why? Because a shelf mover can't unload a truck. It can't sort a chaotic pile of packages. Amazon currently employs about 1.5 million humans globally, mostly to do the things the Roombas can't, grasp, sort and walk. Here is the math that Wall Street is staring at right now. Reports suggest that replacing humans with robots could save Amazon over $10 billion a year. That isn't just efficiency, that is enough pure profit to essentially fund their entire AI research division for free. And they aren't alone. Jeff Bezos himself just dropped $100 million into figure AI. Microsoft added another $95 million. This isn't a maybe anymore. When the savings are in the billions, the board of directors doesn't ask if, they ask how fast. Chapter three, the invasion of the home. But here is where it gets personal. We used to think these things would stay in the factory for another 20 years. We were wrong. Just a few weeks ago, October 2025, 1X officially opened pre-orders for the Neo. This isn't a prototype. This is a consumer product. For $20,000, or about 500 bucks a month, you can now lease a humanoid Android for your home. It's specifically designed with soft muscle technology, so it doesn't accidentally hurt your kids or your dog. It uses an expert mode where, if the robot gets confused, a human operator somewhere in the cloud can take control and finish the task for you. And they aren't the only ones. Figure AI just unveiled the Figure 03 back in October, aiming for mass production of 12,000 units a year. And we know Apple is lurking in the shadows. Rumours about their Project J595 tabletop robot and a future mobile bot are everywhere. When Apple enters a market, it's not a science experiment anymore. It's a lifestyle. This is the iPhone moment for robotics. Just like the smartphone put the internet in your pocket, these bots are putting physical labour in your closet. Imagine coming home and your laundry is done, the dishwasher is unloaded and the floor is mopped. That sounds like paradise, right? But ask yourself, if a robot can navigate your messy living room for $3 an hour, what makes you think it can't navigate your office cubicle for the same price? Chapter 4. The New Power Pyramid Historically, power was a numbers game. If you had a massive population, like China or India, you had a massive economic engine. But in the robot singularity, that logic gets flipped on its head. Listen to me closely. The winners of the next century aren't the countries with the most people. The winners are the countries that control the stack. This is why Morgan Stanley is projecting a global market of 1 billion humanoid robots by 2050. That is a humanoid economy that rivals the entire auto industry. 
Let's visualize this power pyramid. At the bottom, you have energy. Robots are hungry. Above that, chips. Thanks, NVIDIA. Then the AGI models. And at the top, the hardware. Right now, the US has a massive lead on the brain side. But China, China is coming for the body. They are mobilizing their entire EV supply chain to pump out humanoid robots the same way they pump out iPhones. Their Ministry of Industry just declared humanoids a new engine of growth, and analysts think they could dominate the hardware layer completely. In the robot singularity, GDP is just a proxy. It's not about human productivity anymore. It is just a fancy way of measuring how much automated labor your country controls. The human question. So, what happens to us? If your job involves repetitive physical labor, you are in the immediate danger zone. But the jobs that survive are the ones that orchestrate the machine. We are moving from being the muscle of the economy to becoming the managers of intelligence. If you are sitting there asking, okay, but how do I actually make that shift? How do I become the manager? I've got you covered. I just released the AI Career Survival Guide. This isn't a generic ebook. It's a tactical blueprint that helps you run a replaceability audit on your current job and find your asymmetric edge, the specific skills AI can't touch. It maps out exactly how to future-proof your income for the 2025 to 2028 window. The link is right there in the description and the pinned comment. Download it, audit yourself, and build your moat before the next model drops. The real singularity won't happen in a server farm. It happens when intelligence becomes a force in the physical world, building, moving, and shaping reality at a scale our biology just wasn't designed to compete with. So stop asking if robots are going to replace labor. That ship has already sailed. The question is, what role are we going to fight to hold on to when the dust settles? If you want to survive the shift, hit subscribe. I'll see you in the future.